Welcome to 5 Minutes With. Today's guest from the Archdiocese of Vancouver, Clay Emo. Hey everyone, welcome to 5 Minutes With. I'm happy to welcome a special guest today, Clay Emo from the Archdiocese of Vancouver. Clay, can you tell us what your role is at the Archdiocese? Sure, Jason. Thanks for having me. I work in the ministries and outreach office. Basically, it's youth men, young adult, catechesis, evangelization, pro-life, service and justice, marriage prep, First Nations, all these things all put together. And I'm one of three directors, associate directors for this new office that's about three, year, three or four years old now. Okay. Okay. So that's a really long name for an office then. It is. What's it the is. acronym? Uh, M and O. Ministries oh. and Outreach, yeah. Oh, I thought you were going to try to summarize the entire list you just gave. Me. <laughs> no, yeah, you see it on a business card. It's not even a business card. It's like a business like a placard. <laughs> but you have a side hobby that a lot of people know you from, and that's your passion for the Canucks. Tell me about that. Yeah, um, I'm a Canucks vlogger, basically, is the best way to put it. I have a YouTube channel that I actually do uh, videos, vlogs, uh, daily, sometimes twice a day. I, I write par what we call parody songs, taking popular songs and changing the lyrics to make it more Canucks centric. So that's basically the, the thrust of my, my side hobby, my biggest pet. Actually, Archbishop Michael, when he sees me decked out, ready to go to a game, he's, he basically jokes around, so you're going to your real job now. And then I feel like joking, well, they probably pay me. No, they don't pay me. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but in all seriousness, yeah, I love it. I've been a season ticket holder for the past nine or 10 seasons. So be blessed to go to games, take friends, family to games. And then, yeah, I vlog on my YouTube channel. It, obviously, it's a little tougher right now for the past month. But overall, it's, uh, I don't pretend to be a broadcaster or an expert, just a, a fan who sinks, sinks some time and money and energy into the team. Yeah. And I like to talk about what I see. Who's your favorite all-time Canuck? All time, believe it or not, it is Roberto Luongo. Wow. Yeah, I like him a lot. Yeah, you know, he's a bit of a polarizing figure, but he won a gold medal. Obviously, that was with Team Canada, not the Canucks. Uh, but he had a really good run, easily the best goaltender we ever had. Kirk McLean was good, but I, I like Luongo. And I also wrote a couple songs about him for him when he left. And he actually reached out to me on Twitter and said, you know, that was really touching. I really appreciate oh, cool. it. Yeah, he didn't leave under the best circumstances, as you know, Jay, but... Uh, Overall, I, I do think there's a lot of pressure on him, and he put a lot of pressure on himself. Yeah. But great in the community, a good teammate. And as he took himself less seriously, as you know, on Twitter, he became even more likable. Uh, that's for sure. And, and yeah. he's very relatable for you and I, because he was put in an uncomfortable leadership position <laughs> <laughs> that he was probably not ready for. <laughs> That's true, except you and I are still in this diocese. I guess that's the biggest difference. <laughs> well, it's easier to get a job in the diocese than as a professional hockey player. Fair, fair enough. <laughs> that's good. That's good. So you know a lot of inside stuff about the Canucks because you've had a chance to visit. You've probably been in the locker room, stuff like that. Serious question. Which Canuck all time probably ate the most hot dogs? <laughs> I have well, an answer. I have an answer. You do? Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I wouldn't know this uh, as gospel, but you look at some of the size of these, some of these guys, um, you know, Dave Babich looks like he could put a few hot dogs back. Um, Actually, interesting side story. He came to Splashdown Water Park when I worked at the concession and oh. ordered 18 hot dogs. Oh, seriously? No, no, I okay. don't know about the hot dogs part, but he did order food for me. Yeah. And, yeah, and I don't say that because I think, you know, he's a, he's a big muscular man and I, sure. all these guys obviously are. So I don't want anyone to think I could just call Dave Babbage fat. No, that's not what I did. <laughs> um, but no, I, I have no clue. Maybe, maybe Glenn Hanlon. I don't know. What do um, you say? I, well, I would have said Vladimir Krutov. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, actually that is one guy who probably showed up to camp fat. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great point. <laughs> but he, you know how uh, professional um, hot dog <laughs> eaters dip it in water. Yes. He would dip it in vodka. <laughs> okay, yes. I want to end talking about something more important, which is our faith. Yes. Um, do you have any advice, because you have a lot of experience working with young people, speaking young people, do you have any advice uh, for young people right now in terms of their spirituality? What do you think God's calling them to right now? What can they do to grow in their faith right now? With respect to COVID-19? Yeah, particularly during the lockdown. Yeah, I think... Um... For me, I, I think there are ways to stay connected. And I think that's the most important thing. I, I, I feel very blessed that, uh, here's a good example. You know, you and I barely get to see each other maybe three or four times a year, but this, this is awesome. We'll probably chat for a few minutes afterwards. Um, not everyone has the best, you know, say, self-quarantine or home situation. So you, you have to look out for other ways to connect virtually. And I know there are a lot of parishes running masses. There, there's 
really creative things like drive through confessions and drive through adorations with any young person in COVID-19 or not, I'd say it's about finding good role models, finding people that will really speak into your lives, whether they're teachers or youth ministry leaders or peer counselors or, or parents or friends, you know, um, for a, a teen, if you, if you're still pressing your faith, go after your, your, your confirmation sponsor, right? Go after that person and, and ask them to check in on you. Uh, I really think it, it takes some humility and some maturity, but if, if young people, if they can build up uh, accountability relationships, people that they can go to and, and say, Hey, I'm struggling with this, or I need help. Or can you pray with me? Can you tell me, explain why the faith says this, or why is, is the, our church leader saying this? I think everything is predicated, Jason, on relationships, whether the COVID-19 happened or not, but now's another time. Now's a perfect time to really try and strengthen and intentionally seek out those positive relationships in your life. So that's what I would say to young people. And that's what I have been saying, even to my boys, like, uh, and, and my daughter, Kayla, the three of them, they're 18, 16 and 12. Yeah. Gail and I can only do so much, but stay connected to your friends, to your youth ministers, to your teachers, to your parish priests, uh, religious, whatever it may be. Yeah, for sure. Thank you for that. That's great advice. Well, Thank I you. think we're out of time. Thanks for joining me today on five minutes with Clay. Anytime, Jay. God bless you.